Okay. This is chapter 29 of the book God Dictated to Me. As he dictated the Torah, first five books of the Hebrew Bible to Moses. At least it's, it's believed by Orthodox Judaism. And uh, what they'll be surprised to hear is that uh, he also dictated, commanded, and directed each of the prophets, of the book of the prophets, and there's about 20, uh, to write their books. Each individual prophet had God and the Spirit of God come to them because that's how that's when you can hear God speak. They have to enter you. Just as the Spirit alights upon Moshe, um, who the sages believe and in the Talmud uh, is described in Isaiah 53. Now I got a lot of information on that, but I keep repeating it over and over and it's, it's it's easiest if you go back a few videos. Uh, eventually, I, I do it again every two or three videos, trying to explain a little bit more about that. I am the man described in Isaiah 53, Moshe. This is the day of the Lord, and he is here. He has returned. Malachi 3. And you get there by an understanding of Isaiah, particularly Jeremiah, Ezekiel, who is the key to understanding Isaiah 53, and nobody has prior to uh, being properly discussed in my commentary by me. And God wanted it that way, and chapter 53 is, uh, it, it was written for that purpose, as a part of the teachings that I bring. But I'm not going to get into all of that. You can find it on plenty of other videos. Uh, but the bottom line is God dictated, commanded, and directed individuals to write the entirety of the Hebrew Bible, not just the Torah. God's purpose which might prosper, chapter 29, being he, Jesus, took unto him the twelve, that would be his disciples, And said unto them, and this is the God of Israel. I know it's starting out with a reference to a Jesus quote. Then he, Jesus, took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, the Romans, anybody who's non-Jewish, Gentiles, sometimes referred to as the nations, concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spat on, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. That's from the historian Luke in the New Testament to Gospel, uh, chapter 18, verse 31 through 33. The Tanakh, great scroll of Isaiah, Apocrypha, and the Pseudopigrapha are all of the possible scripture that Jesus could be referencing and not one book mentions. A human son of God, a man who is God, a man to be delivered to the Gentiles, mocked, scourged, and put to death, a man who dies for the sins of other men, any man who is to rise from the dead in the third day, or a man who is sacrificed or made to sacrifice himself by God. After the death of Jesus, Apostle Peter taught 
that Jesus was the man described in Isaiah 53? By the way, if you want to find more on that, I think it's 16 and 17, John the Baptist was not Elijah, and the greatest lie, and uh, uh, Jesus' greatest lie and deceit. And it's got a lot. In one day, it got 363, and that doesn't sound much by, you know, rabbi standards who, who, who do videos, but uh, it's a lot for me. Small market, uh, they've been taught, 53 is Israel. They don't want to have anything to do with somebody saying different. They don't even realize it has to be a Gentile. That's who's described in 53. And that's explained. God comes from uh, Adam, Gentile lands, lands of Christianity. And of the Jewish people, none are with him. But he has to come with his representation, his prophet like Moses. God covers the earth, as does his spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is an angel. And most definitely in person, despite the beliefs in Judaism, to the contrary. But you can't know where he is if he's not speaking through a man, or having a man speak words he wants that man to speak, as I am now. And that's, and I'm a Gentile. Now we're probably going to, uh, I think God's going to have me convert to Judaism, uh, Orthodox Judaism in Jerusalem. And we actually started the process in uh, uh, here in Houston, Texas, in America at the largest conservative synagogue, uh, one of the largest in America. But uh, two or three weeks into it, my uh, father had a massive heart attack. And I had stopped going for some time, a couple of weeks, before he was could be left alone, and uh, God decided that uh, we're not going back. You're not going back. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this in Jerusalem. And oh, and, and I did though. We went at a very favorable time when we when I started the conversion class. It was uh, the high holidays, and they gave me free tickets. <laughs> and uh, and I went to a Shabbat dinner with my rabbi that was doing the converting. And I just learned a lot, met a lot of great people, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, was amazed at the singing uh, of the scripture or song uh, in Hebrew by everybody. Of course, I, I don't speak Hebrew. But God's in control of everything. I mean, he could have taught me. He's been with me 16 years now. Preparing me um, to be suitable for his purpose. And all that's covered in Ezekiel. You know, the chapter before this one, I think it's 28. It could be 27, but I think it's 28. This is one Peter who said that, uh, I think Paul did it too. Uh, said that Jesus was uh, the man described in Isaiah 53. If you look at chapter 22, God's righteous servant Moshiach versus Jesus in Isaiah 53, you'll find out he doesn't fit any verses favorably. That's what he's geared for. It's going through 53 again with my commentary, but also commentary on how, once again, Jesus cannot fit this verse. Here's what Peter had to say. For even hereto, hereunto, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye shall follow his steps, who did no sin. But see, Isaiah 53, verse 12. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who? When he was reviled. Reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins. In his own body 
on the tree, that would be the cross, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. That's Isaiah 53, 5. You can find five or six references to 53 in here. For ye were as sheep going astray. That would be 53, 6, verse 6. But are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Well, he was wrong. God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is made suitable for God's purpose, which might prosper. And that purpose which might prosper is found in Malachi 3, where God says, I'm sending my messenger before me, who is Elijah, and I shall return to my temple suddenly. And the angel of the covenant you desire, that's from Jeremiah 31, and it's sin forgiveness, is already on the way. That's the purpose, to return to his temple. But the messenger has to clear the way for him because he knows there's no temple. And you can find that in the covenant of friendship. Look, basically there's six unfulfilled prophecies of the Hebrew Bible in this, the day of the Lord. And it unquestionably is the day of the Lord. And you can find that in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, you got to combine Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Malachi 3. And it tells you it's today. The lands bloom again. Cities restored. Jerusalem rebuilt. And God makes a new covenant with you. Well, if he's making another covenant with the Jewish people, he's going to be here and he's going to have a representation. His prophet like Moses and his God's righteous servant, Moshiach. And I am in addition, Elijah, by my knowledge of heaven that God has taught me. The only man specifically taken to heaven and he returns in the day of the Lord. What are you asking? Well, if you say you're Elijah, tell us about heaven. <laughs> this book is full of chapters on heaven. A heaven for only the Jewish people. That's what God says. If Elijah's purpose does not prosper, there will be utter destruction to the land of Israel. Build the temple. Never defeat it and disperse again. Don't build it when God is here. Utter destruction to the land. It's not in God's power. God considers himself his creation. Absolute power, absolute knowledge. Now he's saying his creation is going to destroy Israel if he can't return to his temple and live amongst them. It's a big factor in never being defeated. Rabbis don't teach that. They teach heaven on earth, messianic era. They teach world exaltation of the Jewish people. You know, they, they teach that two billion Christians are going to disavow Jesus. Two billion Muslims are going to disavow Allah. And they're going to come and worship with the Jewish people, the Jews, and say, you've been right all along. It's the God of Israel. The only God is the God of Israel. <clears throat> And that's just for starters. What about China? What do they believe in that they're going to come exalt the Jew? I bet most of them don't even know what the Jewish people are. False teachings. And they've been reckoned with because I'm here, most of you. When I'm here, God has a reckoning with them and dismisses them before him. They don't go into the scroll of remembrance. They don't see the Jewish heaven unless they straighten up Judaism. And they do it by teaching this book. I am the only teacher. After he dismisses them, he appoints me, Moshe, who he calls my servant, David, a shepherd. Is the only teacher he recognizes. And of course, what do I teach? This book is what I'm doing right now. Other destruction. I mean, he could have come at any time in the last 70 years. 
the day of the Lord began in 1948 when the Jewish people returned. That's all it's ever been. I mean, he's coming with sin forgiveness, but I hear, for instance, Jews for Judaism teaching, uh, you know, we've got to be as sin-free as we all possibly can, and maybe God will return. No, he's coming with a covenant of sin forgiveness. Uh, it's always been. Go to Jeremiah 31. There's three. See a time is coming. And it began in 1948 when they returned and uh, turned the desolate land into what is now an oasis. It's a beautiful country. Jerusalem rebuilt. Time for the new covenant and the covenant of friendship. Four men to come, righteous servants, one description. I handle all them all. And I fit the verses God gave him to me at birth. Did not reveal himself until I was 50 years old to make sure I lived a life of pain, suffering, familiar with the disease and crushed with disease, afflicted by God at birth with disfigurement. My right shoulder, I, and I have no right breast and a withered right arm. And then he afflicted me again with cancer. Now none of this happened to all the Jewish people gathered as one man, Israel. And it certainly didn't happen to Jesus Christ. And 53 describes the Gentile. Now, listen to what Jesus had to say with, what I, with everything I just told you. Jesus had nothing to do with the purpose of Elijah clearing the way for the Lord, get, being instrumental in getting the third temple built, that might prosper of Isaiah 53 and Malachi 3. Saying, Think not, this is Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 36. It's Jesus speaking. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. I bet you've never heard that, Jewish people. I bet most Christians don't recognize it. <laughs> now, the reason that's important is because in Malachi 3, God uh, has Elijah recounsel the son to the father and the father to the son, or family members to family members. Using Judaism, you know, get them all practicing, being observant Jews to the Hebrew Bible and Judaism. Recounsel them together. This is the exact opposite, and which, of course, is my task. And it's the same task as making the many righteous. You know, what I'm doing with Elijah, it, it all falls together. Okay, that's it. Chapter 30 is up next, another proof of Elijah. Oh, yeah.